Hi, welcome to Ukrainian Connections. My name is Kathy Parushi Harris, Katrusha Parushi Harris. I welcome you to our show where we feature different Ukrainian connections, including our history, our arts, culture, heritage, and stories about Ukrainians living in Thunder Bay, Northwestern Ontario, and Canada. We bring on guests of Ukrainian descent and their friends. Today, we have our special guest, Oksana Blahitko. Welcome, Oksana. Hello, Katrusa. Thank you. In each of our shows, we will also have a display of artifacts, both antiques and some newer ones that most have come from Ukraine or have been made by Ukrainians in Canada. So today, of course, we are learning about how to make borscht. So we've included some Ukrainian cookbooks, we have some Ukrainian canning items, some Ukrainian utensils, many of which have come from the Carpathian Mountains, the towns of Kute and Kosyuv, and we have a lot of beautiful Ukrainian pottery. Back to what we're here to do today. As you can see, we're donning special headgear because we're going to be cooking in the kitchen. So our special guest today being Oksana Blahitko, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, thank you. Uh, so I come, came here uh, one and a half months before. I uh, was born in Ukraine in uh, ivano frankivsk region in a small town, Rohatyn. And I've been living in Poland six years, and then I came here. Thank you. Where did you learn to make borscht? Uh, oh, you know, I remember me like all my life eating borscht, but I don't remember a special exactly time when I start cooking that and learn how to do that. So I remember my grandfather was cooking borscht uh, in my family first, and then my father started cooking this borscht, and I, I think I learned from him. So we were cooking together. <laughs> okay. Did you also make borscht with your mother, and did you make it the same way as your mother? Oh, I think nobody uh, do the borscht same way every time. So no, I think so not. <laughs> my borscht is different. What kind of borscht do you like to make? Oh, I think my favorite borscht is meat borscht. You know, it gives me a special, you know, borscht power for me. <laughs> yeah, so I like do meat borscht. Okay, so today we're going to be making some borscht. Well, Oksana's making the borscht or, or asking me to assist her. And we have some ingredients, I see. If you can maybe explain what you're going to be putting into the borscht. Sure. Uh, okay, so uh, here we have some beets. Uh, we have potato, onion, cabbage, celery, uh, carrots, tomato, uh, some uh, spices, her herbs, and I bring mushrooms. Uh, I don't use mushrooms today, but you can also make borscht with mushrooms. So I think that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, I know there's a few other ingredients that we'll be adding um, that we don't have in the basket just because they don't quite fit. So if you are taking notes, um, it'll be a continuous process during today's show. Uh, so what have you already got started here? Uh, so I usually start cooking borscht with the uh, broth. So here I brown the meat before I put it to the water. Also I put some um, uh, celery uh, spices, like I can put uh, root, celery, root celery and uh, maybe some parsley uh, to the borscht and I cook in my broth one and a half hour. The second step is I um, cook my uh, beets, beets, right, okay. I cook my beets and I like them baked because they have a better flour and they uh, have a better color. But also you can cook uh, and boil your beets and or you can also put your raw beets to the borscht. So yeah, this is my baked beets. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what do we have here um, that is also ready for the borscht? So here we have also beans, cabbage and uh, uh, it's already uh, cut um, onion with the uh, carrots. Okay, and what will you be doing with these ingredients here, if you can explain that process. Uh, okay, I will make special um, mixture. We can we call it zapravka. It also means a gas, gas station, but don't never matter. <laughs> so zapravka, it's a special flavoring that you put to the borscht. So you uh, fry your satay or onion with the carrots, uh, like five minutes, I think so, and then we can uh, add uh, our cutted beans beets to the uh, this zapravka and the garlic. 
So we will do it later, right? Okay, yes, we'll do that later. And then when do we add the cabbage and beans? Uh, so we already have cooked beans uh, and beans we will put to our borscht five minutes before it's ready. So cabbage ten minutes before it's ready uh, because it's raw and it needs like a little bit more time to cook. Okay, why are you using cooked beans? Oh, uh, it's funny, but my father says never put raw beans into the borscht because it can be gas station, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> so, so you can use um, canned beans or you can yes. soak and boil your own raw beans and, and then put them in once they're cooked. Sure, yes, but mm -hmm. please use this uh, um, canned beans and rinse it before you cook. Okay, great. And then we're also going to be adding, I think you um, uh, mentioned over there, a potato. And when do we put the potato in to the borscht? So potato, it depends how you how big pieces you cut. Usually it takes 20 minutes to get ready, like uh, small potatoes, one centi centimeters in one, right? Okay, I think I'm going to have to cut that. So oh, I, yeah. she's probably, <laughs> probably has a measuring stick here for me to, oh, yeah. to get the measurement correctly. Um, so with all this talk of, of cooking, with all these beautiful ingredients and our beautiful Oksana here today, um, we need to recognize it is the month of November that we're, we're presenting this. And I'd like to mention that this year in November, Ukrainians have been commemorating uh, for 90 years uh, anniversary of the Holodomor. Um, and this is where from 1932 to 1933, there were 11 million Ukrainians that were intentionally starved to death in a man-made fam famine um, under the direction of Stalin of the Soviet Union. So we dedicate today's episode to the families and to the, to the memories and to those that lost their lives and those that were negatively affected because of this Holodomor. And also in November, we also recognize and commemorate those that uh, lost their lives in war because in Canada, we celebrate Remembrance Day in November as well. So in a few moments, we will be preparing our borscht. Oh yeah. So welcome back to Ukrainian Connections, and now we're going to get cooking. So Oksana, um, what are you going to do first? Uh, okay, like I said before, we already have ready our beets and our broth. So now I will do a special mixture, uh, zapravka. So we have here onion and carrots, and we need to fry it uh, in the same pan that we use uh, for meat. It's very important because uh, you need to have this special flavor. So we put some oil in it, extra oil, and then we need to fry our onions and carrots in it. Okay, so first uh, we need five minutes to saute it. And yeah. So while you're doing question. that, what would you like me to do? Oh, if you would like to, can you please take uh, some potatoes and peel it and cut okay. in a small squares, please? Okay, do you want one or two? Please, two. Two, okay. Yes. Okay, so we have five minutes to saute these vegetables. After five minutes, I will put some tomatoes here. It is important to um, use uh, tomatoes that you have seasonally. So now we have uh, autumn, so I usually use uh, fresh tomatoes. But if you don't have a fresh tomato, you also can uh, use uh, canned tomatoes or uh, even uh, um, tomato paste, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so the recipe that we're making right now, is this a recipe that everybody is making or are there different recipes across Ukraine? Uh, so yes, you are right. Uh, the, in Ukraine, there are a lot of regions. Uh, people are different and their borscht also is different. So uh, for example, in my region, uh, in uh, West on Ukraine, we usually use beans uh, to add borscht. And uh, of course, the most important ingredient is beets. Uh, but also people sometimes put um, um, can cabbage, how you say that? A kapusta or a sauerkraut. Sauerkraut, sauerkraut yes, sorry. right. Mm -hmm. Sauerkraut. So, for example, in the uh, region next to the uh, Black Sea, 
uh, people even use fish for the borscht. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes people also use not red bean bits, but uh, white sugar bean bits. Oh, it's so confused sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, every borscht is different and everyone look, looks perfect and tastes perfect. So I heard somewhere that people even put fruit and or dried fruit. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For example, uh, smoked plums, and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's weird, but it tastes good. And even p uh, people put uh, honey in it, so it's very interesting and nice. Okay, interesting. Um, so, what is the most common ingredient in borscht? It's beets. It's it's really beets. So, uh, like I said, we can bake them. I have some baked beets here. And it's, oh, it smells so good. It's beautiful. And the color is perfect here. Uh, so yes, this is the most important ingredient. So we just happened to come across a great movie if you wanted to watch about the different regional differences in, in borscht. And it's called Borscht, the Secret Ingredient. And uh, it, it is a, um, a whole documentary of a chef from Ukraine who travels across Ukraine, uh, Yevhen, and his last name? Kolopotenko. Kolo, Kolopotenko. Yes. <laughs> um, and it is in Ukrainian mostly with English subtitles, so everybody here in TV land can watch it. Um, and it, it celebrates borscht, and it, it really shares some great information that, that I had no idea about. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so, is there a type of borscht that has no beets in it? Oh, yes, we have special type of borscht. We usually cook it um, in the spring and in the start of summer. And uh, it's, we call it zelene borscht. And it's a green borscht. So, we put um, their kvasok, how you say that? So it's a type of sorrel plant, yeah. um, but we can't, we don't grow it here naturally. We have a different type of sorrel, which in large amounts is not good for you. Um, so if you are looking for sorrel, if you can get the European variety, I know several Ukrainians have it growing um, oh, yeah. <laughs> from, from historical perspectives. They brought it across, uh, across the sea and are growing it for their zeleny borscht. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, only in zeleny borscht we put also an uh, egg. Not uh, any different borscht have no egg there. <laughs> yeah, it's different, but it stays good. Okay, so how did, how did you say you wanted these potatoes cut? Uh, so if you could, you can uh, cut them in a small uh, squares, please. In small squares. Okay. All right. So I see my zapravka is ready. So we can uh, cut our uh, beets in a small uh, sticks. You can also grate, the, uh, grate these beets, but uh, I like the small squares. Okay, so Oksana and I have been working on our, our knife technique and trying to um, keep the blade of the knife sharper. So we've been working on trying to, uh, what, do you call, what do you call this, almost like a teeter-totter uh, using of the knife so that you don't have um, the knife slamming on the cutting board all the time, which tends to dull the knife quickly. And it's also a lot safer for your, for your hands. And if you're, if you're using a knife to always uh, keep your fingers you know, right curled there. like this so mm -hmm. that they're not out so that you could easily lop them off. Um, and uh, even though the color would be the same as a borscht, we don't want that to happen. Uh. Yeah. So <laughs> I think uh, it's the time to finish our zapravka. So when we put this bean bits to the um, our onion and uh, carrots, uh, it's very important to add more garlic there. So garlic is make uh, this borscht taste very good and very Ukrainian. Ukrainian people love garlic. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> How do you say garlic in Ukrainian? It's chestnut. Chestnut. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So stay tuned and we're going to take you to the next step of our borscht making process in a few moments. Thank you. Hi, we're back to Ukrainian Connections, and I can smell a lot of delicious food cooking in this kitchen right now. So, Oksana, what do you have going on now? 
Uh, so this is our broth. Uh, we had uh, vegetables and meat there, so I took it off and I cut the meat and put it back to the pot. And uh, I throw out uh, my vegetables because they are overcooked and all the flavor from the vegetables is in the broth now. So now we have our uh, zapravka ready. You can smell this right. beautiful. Oh wow. Do you want me to smell beautiful. it or do you want me to taste it? How you like. Oh, let me smell first. <laughs> See if I want to taste it. Oh, wow. So this is a combination of onions, right. carrots, and beets that have and been roasted. Oh, and yeah. garlic. The beets it's, and the garlic really were important. added at the end, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. So it's ready now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you like it? Mm, mm. But we, we, also, we also did one other thing. Those beautiful, those potatoes that I cut so beautifully... It's, it was perfect. Obviously. They're perfect. They, they've been boiling <laughs> in with the broth for how many minutes? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes before the end you put your potatoes in a broth. So what we do next uh, that uh, we uh, take our cabbage 10 minutes before the end. So I already cut the cabbage in a, uh, small pieces and yeah, it's raw. Okay. So and then we add this to our borscht. We can use a different spoon. It is also important not to put, this is our cabbage, not to put beans to the zapravka because beans are already ready and they will take all the color from the uh, beans, from the beets, and it goes red. I don't like them red, I like them brown <laughs> or white. So 10 minutes before the end, we put our cabbage and we boil that all together. So while we're waiting for that to, to cook a little bit longer, um, could you tell me how you like to eat your borscht and how other people eat their borscht? What do they serve with oh, it? Oh, I think everyone's have the same, the different way to eat borscht. For example, I like my borscht just with the brown bread and with the butter uh, uh, on it. But you know, my grandfather, he usually eat um, bread, like black, black bread with the thick uh, of uh, animal fat, how you call that? It's so pork, pork fat. Pork fat, mm -hmm. yeah, it, we call it uh, smallet. <laughs> and uh, he puts like a big onion uh, on it and a sprinkle of salt. Well, I don't like that. <laughs> and some garlic too, I think? Sometimes, yes, sometimes uh -huh. onion and garlic. He's like 80 years old and he's still eating that every Sunday. Amazing. I don't know how he's doing it. He's really Ukrainian. <laughs> so today we actually have some rye bread. Uh, we don't have black bread with us today, but did you want me to make a, a piece of that? And we could... Yes, please. Um, yes, please. Uh, you need to promise it? me that you will eat that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Where did we say that? That uh, Smolik went? Smolik oh, is right in the front. Okay. It's ready. So this is um, pork fat that has uh, been boiled down into a smooth a smooth consistency and it's actually local pork and uh, we will I guess butter or how do you call this small sm small it we're gonna small it's the bread and yes. is that a verb it's a new new Ukrainian <laughs> verb <laughs> yes and there are a lot of uh, there, so a uh, small pieces Mm -hmm. How you call that? Shparke, I don't know if there's a little be pieces, almost like bacon bits in, 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 uh, in here. I don't know if you, your cameras can catch this, but they're little bacon bits. And when you bite into this, they're actually going to be crunchy and... And, uh, and it's very tasty. Yeah, it's very nice. tasty. Um, but it's unsalted, so it's not... Um, it doesn't have the, the same salty flavor as bacon. Um, Okay, so I now it's five minutes before the end. I need to add my beans, and they are beautiful in taste. And I put just to the pot. It's five minutes before, and this is the time when we mix all the ingredients have to be there together. So this is my beans and my zapravka. Now my borscht will become right color and right taste. So all this we are putting together did you want um yes some very favorite ukrainian herb added to the borscht ah uh, you know you know my <laughs> favorite and special ingredient in it so yes please katrusa could you could you cut uh, a dill some dill so this is actually frozen dill so it's not um gonna look fluffy until it gets put into the borscht um, 
we were able to find a little bit of fresh dill in the garden for our display. And okay, so I put some broth into my frying pan just to take all the flavor from it. It's beautiful. So this is all the uh, fresh dill that we found in the garden. And how about some fresh parsley too? Oh, we can decorate by parsley. Okay. You can put this onto the bush. So we'll have some fresh parsley in our bowls before we dine on our borscht. Okay, so I think we need to wait five minutes more and borscht will be ready. So while we're waiting for that, um, there was a few things you mentioned that uh, you like to eat, or your, your grandfather ate with borscht, was yep. the, the bread. Um, I know when I grew up, we always had mamalega or boiled cornmeal, um, little chunks of it put into our borscht. And a lot of Ukrainians like to eat sour cream and putting sour cream on top of our borscht is oh, also yeah, good. Oh yeah, this right? is my, the last step uh, of a uh, borscht. So we need to put uh, like a one big spoon, tablespoon to the borscht just in the middle uh, of the plate. And uh, I usually add some parsley. Uh, to the borscht, but people uh, very often eat um, this borscht with the garlic buns and it's very tasty. Also, you can eat with bread, with, I don't know, we eat that Swiss perohe that we have one uh, dumplings in a hand and a cup of borscht in a, <laughs> another <laughs> hand and it was like every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And a lot of times people would be eating borscht, they would make it on Sunday and then they'd have it every day for lunch for until it's gone. So having it at lunchtime yes. is, is yes. quite a favorite. So that's the second secret of borscht. Uh, borscht not that good in the first day, but the second day it's better, much better. The third day it's much, much better, but don't eat it after one week. So <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> Yeah, second day time. is the best flavor of borscht. Okay, and I know we're going to be talking about this in another show is um, the Ukrainian Christmas borscht, which is uh, vegetarian. Oh, yeah. And what do we put in, what do we put in that? Um, uh, it is special because there is no meat there, it just does, we add mushrooms and it's very important to add mushrooms. Also we can um, add uh, vushka. It's uh, mm -hmm. translation, it's ears, but it's uh, actually small dumplings uh, with the mushrooms in it. Okay, wonderful. Um, so we, we are really making this on TV and this has not been sitting for a day um, in our fridge. So the flavor is not going to be as amazing. So what we're doing is we're gonna swap it out with some borscht that we <laughs> actually made yesterday and heat it up. So we just got this borscht piping hot, so it is almost ready to eat. So while we're while we're waiting for that um, to serve to serve that borscht, I wanted everybody to know about the designation that uh, borscht was given for Ukrainians. Uh, UNESCO um, had had designated uh, Ukrainian borscht as a national version of borscht consumed uh, in several countries but it's an integral part of Ukrainian family and community life. So in 2020, it was included in the national list of ele um, elements of intangible cultural heritage of Ukraine. It was July 1st. It's very important. <laughs> July <laughs> 1st, okay. <laughs> <laughs> on Canada Day. Um, and it was considered for inscription on the representative list of the committee's 2023 cycle. So that's pretty significant that Ukrainians claim that borscht is Ukrainian and it's part of our cultural identity. And we find that, that very interesting. Um, with that note, we are talking in Thunder Bay about having a big borscht contest in 2024. Mm -hmm. um, so stay tuned for some more information about that. Uh, and we also have a very unique poster here that was <laughs> lent to me. And Andy Warhol had, had made the very first um, Campbell's soup poster, probably for Campbell's, and he is of Bukovinian Ukrainian descent, so we find that kind of cool. And then somebody replicated that and made a Campbell's borscht poster, and this was lent to us by Danilo Myhal. Um, so that, that's kind of cool. Um, I think... I think I th we're ready to eat I think borscht. we're ready to eat. Okay, so okay. do we... 
Do so, you have a soup ladle there? Sure. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Do you want me to hold this over? Yes. Okay, and I'll take your lid. Thank you. Okay. And that's the wow. our beautiful borscht. No, the camera can't see over top of it, but it looks looks lovely. Okay, maybe maybe yeah, that's that's a really good portion. Okay, do you want to put some um, smetana on here? This will be sure. for uh, um, sampling. So, do we have anybody? Um, so, put, put a, a big spoon of smetana. sour cream. Okay. Well, just on top. Okay. And a spoon for it here. So, do we have anybody who wants a bowl of borscht? <laughs> ho ho, I see a hand reaching forward. Here we go. One of our camera crew. Okay, so if we hear some slurping, it's not, uh, it's not Oksana it's or not awesome. myself, it's, it's the camera crew <laughs> slurping away. Um, have you tasted it yet? Do you like it? What do you think? Is it good? Oh, I see a nod of the heads. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so the borscht is, the borscht is a keeper. Um, thank you, Oksana. Uh, I would like to thank the following families for the use of their dishes and their decor, for their fresh local produce and assistance, use of the poster, uh, use of equipment, and, and the team here and the volunteers here as well. Um, so Slava Yeremchuk, Oksana and Andrei Hamar, Hanush and Bogdan Tichuk, Halya Huk and Stefan Huzan, Nick and Debbie Escott, and uh, Danilo Maihal. And a big thank you to today's guest, Oksana Blahitko. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you.